Good evening. Hello and welcome to today's Arboricultural Association Wednesday webinar. My name is John Parker, Chief Executive of the Association here in the UK. Uh, and let us know where you are, please, in the chat. Say hello. Tell us where you're watching from, because we always enjoy seeing uh, how many countries we've got in. It's always very exciting. This evening, we'll be hearing about two very different issues from the Czech Republic. First of all, Jarek Kolarik will be presenting the work which he's been done recently uh, on the new European standards in arboriculture. And then Martin Tusha will speak about the potential dangers of tree planting and why we can't plant our way out of the climate crisis. There are CEU units up for grabs for this. Woohoo! For any ISA members out there. So stick around and we will give you the code later on. As ever, I'd also like to remind you about our forthcoming webinars, because uh, we've got some more great stuff coming up. Wednesday, January the 18th, so that's next week, the topic is Guidance on Soil Assessment for Trees with Claire Harbinson and Simon Parfi. Now, the last webinar we did about soil, which was also with Claire, achieved an audience of more than 700 people, which is still a record for any of our webinars. So no pressure, but that's your target. Get all your friends and family uh, and we'll beat that 700 uh, mark. Uh, we've then got a bit of a blip in the programming at the moment. So as things stand, there's no webinar planned for January the 25th, but uh, we may well be able to pull something out of the hat for then, so watch this space. February the 1st, we're going to be looking at trees in development with Sharon Durden Hollenby and Luke Fay. And now rescheduled for February the 8th is Trees and the Law with Elizabeth Nichols and Charles Miners. And then we'll have two or three more after that as well. It's all free. Beam directly to your homes. Uh, we really do spoil you, so I hope you can register for those and there'll be a link in the chat shortly. One other little plug whilst I've got your attention. If you fancy brushing up on your arboricultural knowledge, then why not consider one of our upcoming training courses? There's loads to choose from online and in person, and there's a discount for members of the association as well. We've got a professional tree inspection course right here in Gloucestershire next week. Then uh, in February, uh, 17th of February, there's a risk assessment system online training course. And then there's a report writing course on the 1st of March, which is here in Gloucestershire. So if you want to come and see the Malt House, if you want to come and see the amazing luxury in which, uh, in which we live, you can come to one of our training courses. So please do. Uh, and a link to that will appear in the chat as well. So take a look and see if anything tickles your fancy. Right, to work. Carry on saying hello in the chat, put all your questions in the Q&A panel and we'll work through as many as we can at the end and enjoy this opening presentation from Yarek in the Czech Republic. Yarek, over to you. Hello, it's really great to be here. It's a real privilege for me. And uh, I'll start with overview of a project which we ended up last summer. Uh, it's called uh, the European Arboriculture Standards. I'll share with you all what we did before and I'll be really happy to see your feedback on our work. The, the idea of uh, creating European arboricultural standards were, was pretty weird because, you know, uh, for the last 20 years we worked uh, within the, uh, within the in industry-like uh, certification um, certification uh, overseers or uh, parts of certification centers and teachers etc and when we spoke to people around europe we just uh, have the idea that we do the work within you know tree care planting pruning everything in the same way but uh, when we tried to dig a bit deeper, we learned that uh, there are differences. And uh, within the European Arboricultural Council, uh, we created a discussion group uh, four years ago and uh, tried to uh, raise the question, what are the details about the tree care? And uh, uh, we were really surprised that uh, the differences were pretty wide, even within few few countries and that was maybe the start uh, you know uh, i forgot to, to to introduce myself it's not uh, very important but just to know who is speaking to you my name is Jarek Kolarik i'm from czech republic from uh, i'm ceo of a company called safe trees 
but more importantly, I'm a part of an NGO called Arboriculture Association. Uh, sorry, 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 John Park. No, sorry. Uh, Arboriculture Academy, uh, which uh, was leader of this Erasmus project, which I will present you the results from. So uh, the first uh, thing which we did was uh, research on uh, what are the standards within Europe, whether they are accessible, whether they are updated. And uh, you know very well that uh, these uh, standards are not uh, always uh, available. And um, most um, importantly, they really differ in, um, not maybe in the general overview, but in the details they really do. Uh, we tried to uh, connect uh, really interesting people from 12 countries around Europe and we tried to uh, create something new because, you know, uh, to write the European standards means it must not be copy of any national standard because other people will definitely, okay, we don't want Czech standards translated into English. This must be something, uh, some umbrella Thing for all European countries which are applicable, which don't uh, contradict the national standards and which bring a new quality into the, into the industry. So the start was pretty intense. Uh, I must thank to EAC, European Arboriculture Council, which uh, gave budget for the start of this, uh, this, this project. And as I told you before, uh, we were successful in uh, uh, asking for Erasmus Plus uh, project uh, three years ago. And uh, we had the opportunity to uh, join people from uh, 11 countries and the 12th country join us for uh, their own budget. And uh, yeah, and uh, try to come with something uh, which will, uh, let's say, move the the, the industry uh, a bit a bit further. The first concept was uh, to create a structure, a system which will join uh, many activities within the recent uh, agriculture, which uh, you know very well, the wet search system, the you know biomechanics system, and all these uh, new features which were not always mirrored in the national standards of uh, countries like Germany, UK, uh, Spain, Netherlands, etc. Uh, we uh, worked within the group pretty hard on, uh, uh, let's say, communicating these things properly, not only with uh, people within the group, but with uh, experts in uh, certain in, uh, in the countries. And um, uh, it was a real challenge. On the other hand, it was really great time. And I'm really grateful that I had the opportunity to be within this group. And uh, I think many people from the TEST group, which is the name, the acronym for the group, are present now. So I want to thank them again for the, the possibility to go with them uh, through these discussions. Within the project, we had the opportunity not only to have chats and to have uh, you know discussions, but to really visit the sites, visit the the, the trees, the specific uh, treatment treatments, and to see the real reality in the um, eleven countries around Europe. So we really spent time not only on uh, discussing and you know putting text together and analyzing resources, but we really tried to uh, see the proper or the uh, the applications which are not common for uh, for everyone and to discuss them in real detail. Uh, you know very well that within the last three years, the COVID hit pretty hard. So uh, the Erasmus project, which is mainly uh, focused on financing the, the transfers, the, the uh, you know, moving from country to country, was pretty, you know, hard hit to this project. On the other hand, we learned a lot uh, about using technology, about organizing the webinars and, uh, you know, you know uh, filming stuff and uh, etc. So it was, it was uh, demanding. On the other hand, I think that the quality of the outputs increased with this, uh, this uh, impulse. 
uh, first step uh, for creating the standards was the draft which was circulated uh, using uh, channels of uh, EAC uh, it was circulating through all you know certification centers within Europe to get their feedback their position on uh, the statements within the standard and uh, after uh, the discussion or the spreading of the first draft we got uh, really you know lots of uh, feedback which we had to discuss again um, introduce into the text and uh, you know create the final one here I must uh, thank again to uh, our colleagues from our Culture Association, Simon Richmond and Sarah Bryce, who then translated our English into real English. You know, this uh, was this pretty funny story because try to imagine 12 people in the room. No one speaks real English because there was no no uh, native English speaker within the group and these 12 people try to share their knowledge their experience in pretty you know deep on a pretty deep level without speaking proper English so you can imagine that it was really demanding not only from the let's say technical part but from the communicational part as well and thanks to Simon and Sarah most probably the uh, resulting text can be read even from native speakers let's hope the final image of the standards uh, was created by by our graphicer and i must really thank to olga klubova uh, which is the girl from latvia and she is responsible for all the pictures and for her i think it uh, was really demanding to create the pictures with uh, lots of comments and uh, details to be changed afterwards so olga thank you again yeah, and uh, in summer uh, last year, we uh, published the first set of the standards. We organized a conference which was held in, in uh, Czech Republic. I will then uh, show you a link uh, where you can, in our YouTube channel, see the conference again. It was recorded, so you can enjoy the, the lectures. And uh, uh, here on this webpage, uh, European Arboricultural Standards.eu, if you just uh, you know make a screen copy of this QR code, it will lead you to the to the web page. All these standards are uh, available for free, downloadable in PDF. So that's that's the final uh, final uh, output of our work. Uh, here, just one idea uh, because you know. Um, on the very start uh, and even before we really thought how to um, you know how, how to offer these outputs to the industry and you know very well that majority of the national standards are being sold um, by you know associations by by publishers etc but uh, if you think about it the, uh, the the inside of the standard the text of the standard is based on experience time you know lifelong experience of many people who you just can't pay properly they do it for free really and uh, so we came with the idea so okay we will invest into the industry all these people or these experts uh, will contribute into the final text but if they do they do it like voluntary uh, work and it should be spread for free so uh, the fact that the standards are available for everyone uh, is uh, one of the ideas which um, i must say we are pretty proud of yeah and uh, i will go with you now with uh, certain areas which maybe uh, might be of interest for you uh, within the, the standards and uh, please read them again and if you have any more ideas i'll be more than happy uh, to uh, to get your view on uh, you know this first uh, I know whether you see it uh, properly but uh, this is translation of the of the sentence tree pruning into all languages within European Union and just seeing this you, you can imagine how big deal is to really spread the news the the information about what it what it is the tree care uh, only within the 27 countries. 
the content of the standard uh, well you will you will see it and uh, maybe i will just um, focus on a um, few ideas which uh, could be maybe uh, of interest for you you know the basic logic is definitely no rocket science you will find there all the uh, let's say generally no known uh, principles like target pruning like the idea that the, the uh, branch color is more obvious in lower part of the crown or with, with dying branches than in the upper part all these uh, regulations how to how to uh, uh, remove the branch without damaging the the tissues of the stem etc so uh, the first part i think is just uh, overview of uh, pretty known uh, known uh, rules and uh, just making a general and general uh, you know overview but uh, you know very well that in the last years, uh, at least in our country, in last years, uh, the, the industry moves and still moves more and more into the ideas that we should not intervene into the trees by sterilizing them. We should uh, vice versa, support biodiversity, support the uh, natural image of the, of, of, of the trees uh, and stuff like that. So uh, quite uh, an important part of the standard was given to uh, methods how to support the natural uh, immune system of the tree. So for example, we define something called bark bridge, which is uh, the minimum distance between, uh, between branches which uh, are being removed to uh, still retain the phloem paths between the two wounds to be uh, to make the tree able to support the wound wood and callus creation And uh, uh, quite uh, lots of uh, discussion and uh, at least for from perspective of Czech Republic quite a large shift was uh, in the area of deadwood management because you know very well that in our break culture and I think this is common throughout Europe um, that uh, the first uh, task which arborist does on a tree just remove the deadwood that's first step by tree pruning and uh, this uh, starts to contradict to the principle that we should really retain the valuable uh, microhabitats if possible and if it doesn't uh, doesn't uh, go against the uh, the the idea that the trees must be safe within the site they grow on uh, so we really defined and we stressed the, the, the idea that the deadwood management is a necessary uh, system. We try to really uh, stress the idea that many associate organisms are depending on the deadwood being present in various forms in the crown, on the ground, everywhere. So at this moment we uh, prefer the uh, the, the expression of deadwood management before deadwooding or removal of deadwood or something like that. And uh, within, let's say, general arboricultural practice, uh, we prefer uh, not completely remove deadwoods uh, or dead branches, uh, but either break them or uh, retain small you know pieces of the of the dead wood in the crown just to support biodiversity if applicable if possible within the stage of development of the tree and within the uh, the site the tree grows on 
For this purpose, the standard uh, includes not even the target pruning, but uh, the possibility to leave the steps or the, um, to apply rip cuts at, and uh, systems like this. So, uh, for example, from my perspective, from perspective of the Czech Republic, these standards joins the, let's say, mainstream arboriculture with the system which was created within the VETSERT uh, program, the Veteran Tree Specialist program. And uh, for us, this is, let's say, the first generic material which uh, doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't uh, uh, split the industry into two, but joins the ideas within one system. Well, the main part or the main uh, heart of the tree pruning system is the matrix which divides the similar or the different ways of uh, interventions in the crown according to their position. So whether they, uh, they are um, provide or they are being done within the crown or just on the lateral crown or in the upper part of the crown for stabilization reasons. Uh, and it's of course shaping uh, and uh, divides these or defines these um, kinds of intervention intervention for uh, different uh, development stages of the trees which was really really interesting uh, idea and discussion because you can imagine that uh, for example the biomechanical stabilization being applied on young trees is a nonsense really yeah but the same thing being applied on the mature or senescent trees can make real sense and can can support the, the sustainability of the tree. So uh, if you will read the text of the standard, this is maybe the main idea and main difference which we created uh, in comparison with other systems being present at this moment. Uh, another point, uh, not to uh, not to steal too much time, was application of the uh, tree architecture uh, system. Uh, at this moment, we uh, focused on a differentiation of uh, the support of the main leader in the crown for young tree care, which is pretty obvious. And um, uh, maybe this is, at least in our part of Europe, this is very sensitive thing because the nursery people uh, don't really like or apply this knowledge uh, within, the, within the industry. I hope that it is different in other countries, but uh, to differentiate species of trees according their system of creating the apical dominance, so the, the terminal leader, is very important thing and we are really sure that this is something which will make quite a lot of difference on a young tree pruning in near future. Yep, uh, this is just maybe a uh, quick video to show you maybe the main um, main uh, tools made main techniques to be applied in reality by the way if you like these videos this is just short uh, short overview of them uh, later i will show you the link to our youtube channel where where you can enjoy them and we will slowly translate the, the all these videos into english so if you subscribe there you will be provided with them pretty soon
maybe first idea that uh, we try to create a system when the installing the new technical uh, you know artifacts into the crown is the last instance really if the problem can be solved by target modification that should be the option one if we can just uh, you know uh, remove the or uh, shorten the reduce the the parts of the crown which are um, problematic from the stability of the from the point of the stability of the tree it should be preferred before installing the cabling bracing systems I know that uh, this is not uh, perceived like this in all countries, but uh, the group agreed on the, the idea that um, these uh, uh, technical things are pretty um, problematic from the point of view of uh, maintenance and they always influence the dynamics and the development of the crown. So the other ways how to stabilize trees should be preferred. That's our idea. Quite a wide discussion was on the topic where to install different uh, systems because you know very well that at this moment we have even static systems with shock absorbers and you know many new new ways how to deal with the uh, with the destabilized parts of the crown. So uh, it was really really you know large discussion and you can enjoy the text and I'll be happy to hear your your idea. Um, the you know we covered uh, I, I don't want to spend too much time here because Martin is waiting for his part so uh, just to keep keep in mind that uh, we try we tried to cover all the ways these uh, the stabilization systems are being used throughout Europe where you can really perceive that for example the French um, uh, French approach to st crown stabilization is very different from German or Spanish one so uh, there are lots of experience which are not yet let's say harmonized maybe it's not uh, still time to harmonize them but definitely uh, read the, the 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 things and see how it differs uh, in uh, your experience or in the in the standards being being applied in your country in your setup uh, maybe a uh, last and one of the most important parts of the standard was uh, uh, trying to introduce into the industry some tools to enable arborists to easily uh, take records on uh, tree stabilization systems and to return with the, in the inspections because at least in our part of Europe this is a complete nightmare for your idea we've got within czech republic only within our uh, shared uh, inventory systems something like eighteen thousand trees being uh, with installation of these systems whereas the inspection are being taken on four thousand trees only so there is a huge uh, problem with uh, installed uh, cabling bracing systems in comparison of, uh, with how many trees are being uh, you know followed with proper maintenance proper care for this reason we created an a free app as one of the intellectual outputs of the of the project it's called share database of stabilized trees you can uh, you can uh, see it i see that i've got there the link wrong it's www.sdstrees.eu i'll have it on the on the uh, other part and maybe andrew put it into the chat already this is a free app you can download it for uh, ios or android devices and uh, you can start uh, you know making inventories of your trees with installed cabling bracing systems and the system makes sure that you will get notice every january uh, which trees should be reinstalled rechecked etc so look at that maybe you will enjoy that here is the real uh, link and you can have the screenshot of the QR code to download it.
last part uh, is the tree planting standard which is maybe the bridge to the Martin's, uh, Martin's presentation. The tree planting is uh, really, you know, a huge part of the industry at this moment. Uh, our country, uh, our politicians really loved the tree planting for last three years and it got huge support. Our government uh, pr proposed to plant uh, 10 million trees within five years uh, for your idea, 10 million, we've got 10 million people within our country. So these numbers are really huge. Uh, we are not sure whether it's uh, positive or negative. Anyway, we need to really make sure that the, the, the process of tree planting is being done properly and plus that there is lots of information about the post-planting tree care because without that the planting doesn't make sense at all. Within the creation of the standard, we really focused on uh, defining what uh, system or what um, what is the, uh, the the position, the site, the tree should be planted in, and what are the differences in uh, basic techniques if the, uh, the planting site is restricted or uh, you know specific. Uh, pretty uh, big. Uh, part of the standard deals with uh, different or with the uh, definition of uh, tree uh, stock quality. This is a very sensitive uh, topic again in our setup in our country or in our part of Europe where the policy in tree planting is to buy as cheap tree as possible and then to let's say support it with some uh, kind of uh, pruning and etc etc and compensate for the low quality of the stock on the very start which is completely wrong so the standard just goes against this logic defining that the tree stock quality is a very basic demand must be as good as possible in uh, many uh, aspects and uh, comes with the idea which at least in our part of Europe was not common that there can be different tree qualities for different setups because you definitely need uh, different uh, tree shape for uh, being planted in park or on the edge on the on the on the street or so uh, yeah read the text uh, you will see what what i mean with this and uh, the tree stock quality was really something we we concentrated a lot uh, time for tree planting is pretty clear there are differences even uh, within creating a tree pit or the the, the pit for for tree plantings so we uh, join the, the experience with the uh, different shapes so the round shape which uh, should be used only in high quality soils with no compaction etc with this uh, you know well, uh, box-like uh, pit and uh, in last years at least in our country is very preferred to create these uh, angled uh, pits which support the penetration of the tree roots into surrounding areas even by uh, in, in clay uh, soils and soils which are uh, which are um, uh, the, the urban soils the anthropo anthroposoils yeah, uh, so uh, the tree pit is one of the, the, the uh, ideas which you'll have found there and very, very important part is the water supply. You know very well that the climatic change, one of the parameters uh, moves or shows that it's very uh, difficult to really water the trees uh, properly. So for us, the idea to describe and really to show uh, how different the ways to to um, to uh, apply the proper amounts of water and to let the water to penetrate at least for the first year directly above the uh, the, the the roots of the tree to support it for uh, for the uh, the transplanting shock. 
was very important. So uh, we really joined the, and described the the experience from uh, different uh, parts of Europe, and we tried to uh, offer them to the uh, to the uh, arborists um, to to use. Uh, yeah, tree pruning at planting was again quite quite an important thing, and I must say that even now within Czech Republic, this is uh, area where we, we really exchange uh, discussions very fiercely, I would say, because we learned that Czech and Slovak republics are the only ones who do the so-called compensation, uh, comparative tree pruning by planting, by uh, with with aim to remove quite a large uh, amount of the crown for compensating the loss of the tree roots, which is based, the idea is based on, uh, let's say, balancing the water supply, but on the same moment, we uh, interfere with the uh, with the um, phytohormone system of the tree, and there are quite uh, large studies which show that by uh, uh, heavy tree pruning by planting, we reduce the dynamics of development of new roots and really prolongate the transplanting shock. So this is the area where the European standards being applied in our setup is really pushing the industry into new practices, new logics. Yeah, you know, you will find there very uh, big number of special techniques. Uh, palms are completely new for the Czech Republic, so this is something we really don't have uh, lots of experience with. And again, we tried to really, uh, you know, describe, uh, document all the parts of the tree planting uh, process, the tree stock quality uh, takeover and all the parameters which uh, are uh, being applied by the tree planting to make it available for the industry. So you can enjoy the videos later. Well, that's it. Uh, the standards at this moment are within the project were created in English and German. Uh, in the uh, you know, first year they were translated into um, six languages more and at this moment we've got already signed contracts for translation in uh, many languages within Turkish and Ukrainian etc. So we are really proud that the, the resources here is spreading throughout Europe and people really feel that it's important to have them translated. If anyone from this group, it's completely open, have interest to translate the standards into any languages where they are not yet being translated, please use this email address, write us the license is for free. We can or we the policy is to provide only one license per language. So, uh, you know, be first and you will have the, the opportunity to do that. The translated standard must be provided for free in PDF form, but you can uh, print it out and uh, sell it if you wish as printed material.
Yeah, so these are uh, the basic basic rules. And if you want to go for forward and write us, and you will get the the uh, signed contract for the translation and the support, of course. Yes, and the last part is appreciation of the team. So here, just enjoy all the members of the test group, which are uh, responsible for the standards. You will see that uh, they are from different countries, from different uh, setup, uh, consulting companies, practical uh, companies, uh, deputies of national uh, arboricultural uh, groups or certification centers of the EAC. I must stress that EAC was a very important part of this uh, this, this group and we really uh, enjoyed the support and uh, we are still enjoying support of EAC and uh, uh yeah and i must again thank uh, to all the members of the group because uh, everyone worked really hard and contributed a lot to the uh, to the uh, standards which uh, we can now enjoy Okay, so this is all from me. Uh, the last uh, link is to the to the YouTube channel where you can enjoy the videos from the final conference and uh, some videos from the which I showed you before. And uh, last information from me that uh, we uh, we are successful in a follow up project um, which is called Ecost, and uh, now uh, within next three years we are developing three uh, follow-up standards for arboriculture in from the part of the consulting arboriculture so tree assessment standard tree value calculation and protection of trees on development side so you can look forward to enjoy more support from our group thank you for your attention thank you so much that was really great Brilliant. Although that video felt like a sort of a highlights package of nights out across Europe I've had for the last few years. It was, I'm sure I've been drinking with most of those people. Wonderful. Um, okay, thank you so much for that. Everybody loved it. If anyone's got any more questions for Eric, then please put them into the Q&A panel. Don't use the chat. I'll get confused. So put them in the Q&A panel. Um, there was a, a bit of, um, occasionally there was, or some of it, there was sort of like rectangle bits in the top right hand corner, oh. which might have obscured a couple of bits. We'll fix that in a recording thing, but if anyone missed any uh, missed anything, then just let us know or email Yarrick and we can provide slides and stuff. So it's all it's all fine. So brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, well, we shall move straight on now to our second presenter, uh, also in the Czech Republic. Uh, absolutely delighted to welcome Martin. Over to you. Thank you, for uh, John. Thank you uh, to everybody to having me and thank you for Yaroslav's presentation because it was wonderful and the job made on the standards is absolutely amazing. I saw them. Uh, so uh, thank you for your attention. I saw many of you. Uh, I will share my screen with the presentation and let's start. Um, Today's presentation is about it's it's a kind of pilot presentation of my whole concept, uh, which I developed last year, um, and this is offering 
a kind of starting discussion about reshaping the role of arboriculture in times of climate emergency. My name is Martin Tusha. I'm coming from Czech Republic. I'm chief researcher and business developer for uh, 3IB. I will mention it later. And uh, as well, I'm a president of an NGO. Uh, here you can see in down uh, right corner, uh, you can scan the QR code. I prepared a special web page for this webinar on our website, and you can download a couple of uh, materials uh, and this presentation as well. Uh, you can use it and use it, please, because it's very, very important. Uh, today, let's say we talk about climate change, climate emergency. Uh, is everything connected with urban forestry and arboriculture? Uh, I would uh, like to announce that for today's webinar, let's uh, put equals to urban forestry and arboriculture, even though there are some differences. We will talk about large trees because they are so much important. Uh, uh, and we will uh, discuss ecosystem services of these trees. And uh, last but not least, uh, it's about personal mission and initiatives of uh, everyone uh, from, from, our, uh, from us. Well, okay, you, you see my mission just very briefly uh, as Outside of the industry, I'm trying to connect scientists, policymakers, and local implementers to implement new scientific knowledge into daily practice because uh, I can observe more. So uh, here are some of my findings. But before we start, uh, I would like to uh, give you a uh, question. Uh, if you would be so great and send your estimate to this question, how many trees? Ah, we've got a pool. Excellent. Uh, how many trees do I have to plant to replace one large tree? Because it's basically the essence of this presentation, these concepts and everything else uh, then, then is derived from, from there. So how many trees do you think? Do we have to plant to replace one large tree? Well, okay. Now something about me. Maybe my computer doesn't agree. Well, okay, we, here I am. Uh, I'm really a lucky person, you know, uh, because I still live in time when I can change something. And that's why I'm talking to you. I'm talking to the whole world. I'm sending abstracts, I'm, I'm, I'm doing uh, articles because we still can change something uh, which is really threatening us. And this is climate change. Uh, the truth is that there is a significant trend. Uh, people are moving to cities. So uh, we, we suppose that something about 82% of citizens of Europe and approximately the same number of people around the world will live in cities in 2030. I'm an enormous number. Um, I consider us to be lucky, but I know that not everybody, everyone uh, should consider the same, that I live in relatively climate stable countryside. I've got a large garden with fence, um, food self-sufficient uh, self about 80%. I source the other uh, food from uh, the local farmers. And I have no children, but I'm saying that, uh, you know, I could forget about all the climate change. I'm 50, uh, I don't need more money. So uh, let's forget it and uh, don't care about anything. Uh, but for me, it's my personal mission uh, to join the forces and to find fight uh, the, the, the climate change uh, with, uh, with my point of view and activity as much as possible. Well, okay, so this is just a pictures, you know, what we do in our garden, uh, what uh, uh, we've got such a friends, uh, basically uh, with 100 square meters of vegetable garden, we are almost, success, uh, almost self-sufficient in terms of food production. But what, what, what's happening 
now in Europe, uh, what was happening around uh, the US, the, the whole world, uh, is that the uh, climate change is not something what is go uh, going to come, is already happening. Uh, this is just, you know, tomatoes, nothing uh, very exciting, but um, I'm too a victim of climate change. Uh, you know, it's the picture from uh, November 11 this year, and I was harvesting my uh, my tomatoes. Basically, um, November 11 is 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 a name day in Czech Republic of Martin of me, and this day uh, is normally snow coming, and I'm I'm originating from mountains, so I love skiing so much and. Uh, uh, in my childhood, I was skiing these days, not anymore. Uh, well, just a quick overview, how I came to arboriculture, what, what is my background? You know, uh, I spoke to Arboriculture Association from UK, so uh, it was quite nice to uh, put some pictures, what I did before, uh, let's say 10 years ago, I was working with Willow. This is living below. Uh, we uh, worked on as well with my wife. Uh, we did something like four hundred projects, and uh, it was a kind of bridge to uh, uh, what we do, what, what I do now, uh, because we found and established the market for uh, watering bags in Czech Republic and Slovakia. Uh, and it was basically it's it's oriented to newly planted trees, so. You might I ask yourselves, you know, so why why, why these guys telling us this is not correct to plant so, so many trees around the world? Well, okay, uh, this is obvious. Uh, we started to think about uh, about what we do, and uh, we started another project. I don't want to talk about it any uh, anymore. This is uh, a set of tools for watering of large trees because, you know, uh, we found out it's very difficult to plant trees. It's financially expensive. It's it's uh, that the the planting uh, succession is not uh, very very well sometimes, uh, and basically it's not very sufficient. So we started to uh work uh, on on large trees well this slide is let's skip it well okay so the main message today <clears throat> and this is this is really the core and i would like you to understand uh take it accept it even though i know that planting trees is important but not in such high amounts if you take a math and put it into science point of scientific point of view, a large tree is irre irreplaceable asset. You know, there is something, uh, there is something uh, which is called ecosystem services, uh, which are basically services provided by tree uh, to uh, humanity, to, to our society. And the larger tree is, uh, the better, in terms of ecosystem services. Well, uh, you definitely know these. Uh, these are beautiful oaks of England. Uh, there is a lot of them, and uh, they're always inspiration uh, to so many, uh, I call them tree huggers. You know, uh, they open a Facebook or Instagram in the morning and they like uh, so many, uh, so many nice pictures of of trees, uh, but this is the whole activity, uh, what they do, uh, but still they are, they are uh, call themselves like tree lovers, but they don't do basically anything. And what, <clears throat> what is my, my, my objective is to convert these guys who like these pictures to people who does something activ actively by themselves and to, spread the message further 
And that's why, uh, you know, I, there are another pictures from Poland uh, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's around the world, you know, everybody loves trees. Uh, and the next steps, maybe they, they plant some, uh, but no aftercare. And, and they totally forget about trees we already have, you know. <clears throat> So, so basically, I was asking people around the world, I mean, scientists, about how many trees do I have to plant to replace one large which was removed. And uh, out of these research discussions and uh, all this stuff, uh, international, uh, there, there is one basic outcome, large tree. Uh, provides significantly more ecosystem services, including carbon sequestration than small trees. And uh, if you start to calculate, you, you realize that the relationship is not linear, like you know, you increase by one centimeter in diameter and uh, it doubles, or you, you double diameter and it doubles ecosystem services. It doesn't work like that. It's more exponential. But the problem is as well that we, are not able to grow large uh, trees in cities anymore. And this is really threatening. But everything started in 2020, I believe. Yes, uh, Professor Momo, uh, he is a novelist. And I will have, uh, I, I have so, so much luck that I can call him a friend. We will co-present uh, co some presentations in the future this year. He published a study, um, and uh, in the study, they study they they measured actually measured six hundred thousand trees in different plots around uh, the U.S. forest. It's based in Forestburg, but it doesn't matter. But they realized that uh, forty three percent of carbon was stored only in three percent of trees, and these three percent were the biggest stems, which were in the forest. Uh, and the, dur during the, uh, reading this study, my mission started, uh, because well, already known and it's, it's, you know, quite uh, known in general, life expectancy of trees in cities is very low. I would define very low, uh, the, according to different studies, it is something about seven to 28 years. Sometimes it's it's longer. Sometimes it's it's shorter. Uh, doesn't matter. It's it's really short, uh, and we know exactly because I talk to cities that that they basically plan uh, planting trees for twenty years and then they want to uh, replace them. This is something which is you know unbelievable. In this uh, next slide uh, comparison, you know. Um, if you do uh, an assessment of uh, carbon footprint uh, produced by a planting tree, uh, producing the, the, the stock aftercare and all this stuff, you realize that we plant trees for, to fight climate change, but we're actually harming ourselves because the, the 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 question of this study was to calculate when the tree planted in a city becomes carbon neutral, which means uh, where when the, via carbon sequestration of via photosynthesis is the carbon uh, produced during the planting process and all this stuff uh, uh, sequestered and neutralized by photosynthesis and this is 20 to 26 to 33 years it's unbelievable and i bet no one from the stakeholders uh, who is uh promoting planting trees uh, they doesn't know of course if you've got some kind of mortality five percent ten percent then uh the whole uh a lay or, or or group of trees has much more longer uh, carbon neutrality than just these twenty six years, 
what is important for, for people from Europe, for example, this study was based on uh, transport of stock from the nursery uh, distant 82 kilometers away from planting site. Uh, it's quite normal in Czech Republic, Slovakia, and whatever else, we plant trees produced in Netherlands, in Italy, in uh, Hungary, which means for the rest of the world, a uh, thousand kilometers of transport. So these trees are carbon neutral, like after 50 years, maybe if they survive. Well, okay, so it's time to review your answers from the chat. I don't know if I can get some results we have. John? Andrew? Okay, nevertheless. Yeah, sorry, Martin, we've got your results here. Um, so 23% uh, opted for 30. 38% opted for 300, 26% went for 3,000, 11% went for 30,000, and 1%, so four of you, went for 3 million. Okay. Okay, you clever guys. Uh, uh, you're scoring much more, be much more be uh, better than the others, so I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm really amazed. Well, okay, so let's reveal it. Um, of course, the comparison uh, comparison uh, lies, or, or yeah, uh, the base for comparison is what kind of factor or ecosystem service uh, we take first, and the second, how large is the large tree originally, which was removed, and uh, how big uh, how big uh, stock we plan, but. Uh, you know, before uh, what I wanted to show you, uh, to share, uh, it's it's very difficult to display these answer or graphically somehow to express or to uh, communicate to, uh, let's say, people outside of the industry. So I asked uh, you know, artificial intelligence if it, the system of, uh, of artificial intelligence can display somehow the answer but even uh, AI is not able to display it. Well, okay. So uh, we did an example uh, from with uh, Bob Leverett, who is uh, uh, a colleague of Professor Mumo. Uh, I was speaking about before. Uh, we did the calculation on red oak, uh, which is 30 meters height or 100 feet height in height and dbh about uh one meter thir 36 centimeters we calculated biomass and uh above and below ground biomass we calculated uh a carbon stock and we did it uh for uh different other sizes of trees which means about age of 30 16 10 7 and 3 when we considered age of 7 as a, new, a standard uh stock planted in the cities which means that these guys who offered uh, the 3000 trees as a replacement of these uh large red oak uh, are winning guys. On the other hand, uh, there is no not uh, if if we calculate. Uh, sorry, if the wood of these original large tree is burned, it means that we have to double the number, the number uh, all numbers. But let's say. Now, then we are in 6,000 uh, uh, newly planted trees. And if uh, we calculate mortality of new newly planted trees, we can easily get these 10,000 trees as a full replacement of large red oak, uh, uh, which was uh, removed from anywhere in terms of carbon storage. Um, if we go to three years old stock, uh, 
uh, the, the number skyrockets to 50,000. Uh, we can demonstrate on this one big problem that even though we would like to replace the ecosystem services of, sky, of carbon storage, we don't have place on Earth. There are some more details about uh, carbon stored uh, in these trees which were mentioned. I will recommend I, I will recommend you to download the presentation and to uh, get closer look. Basically, these large uh, trees store something about seven uh, tons of carbon, which is uh, uh, which equals to twenty five. Uh, 25 uh, tons of CO2. And you can see that this uh, small guy about seven years old is something about 8.3 kilograms of uh, CO2 equivalent. Very important to distinguish carbon and CO2. Uh, we will go to this later. In terms of carbon sequestration, which is something happening during the time, uh, basically, here it's it's within one year. And there is a different story. The replacement is not necessary to be so huge. Uh, let's say that we uh, have a, a standard carbon sequestration of this large tree, about two hundred fifty kilograms of CO two, and this seven years old uh, tree. It's about four kilograms. So, so it's not so huge, yeah. But it's very important, but here, and it because carbon sequestration depends on how uh, how how uh, growth of bio biomass uh, is going on, if it is uh, big or small, it's 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 uh, direct dependence. Uh, the bigger uh, biomass grow, the, big, the bigger carbon sequestration. And it has to be stressed that if uh, the large tree is supported well, it, you, you can't beat them uh, uh, with, with a smaller trees. Again, I recommend to study that later. But anyway, uh, there is a comparison of uh annual sequestration of co2 of this big tree 100 years old uh red oak and this is a smaller tree in age of around 30 years and you can see here uh sequestrate car, uh, co2 in kilograms uh depending on annual increment of trunk in diameter millimeters and annual height. So basically what I presented you in the previous slide is these 250 kilograms of CO2 uh, was represented but by, by incremental trunk diameter growth of 2.5 millimeters only. And height gain in something about seven millimeters. Uh, so so tiny, so so tiny uh, difference and so big carbon sequestration. But what does it exactly mean? If we can improve uh, the growth of the tree, we can sequester maybe three times or maybe four times more uh, of CO two by uh, by just improving uh, the growing conditions. Of course, we can do the same uh, with the smaller tree. You know, um, the, the blue line represents this comparison what was before uh, on the previous slides. But here we can we have gain in height 30 centimeters and six millimeters in drunk diameter, uh, diameter uh, which is quite huge. So I would say, you know, uh, these Americans, uh, American scientists, they gave me underestimated growth of the large tree and overestimated growth of the uh, of the smaller tree. The result is is again that uh, the the large tree is really unbeatable uh, tool to sequester carbon, 
And the similar similarity uh, goes to almost all ecosystem services like uh, like cooling, uh, cooling of uh, microclimate and uh, the others. Uh, some of your colleagues from the UK, uh, Jeremy Burrell, uh, he published even way before the study uh, his 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 uh, uh, famous graph of how many benefits we are losing if we uh, removing if we remove three in age of eighty. It's not based on. Um, let's say precise calculations but it's really worth to uh to to have a look on that because jeremy just nailed that uh before we even know uh the exact numbers of of carbon stored in in trees congratulations to this well to summarize that it it makes really economic and logical sense to use trees we already have, especially in the cities, to mitigate climate change and to use the current infrastructure to adopt to climate change. Because, for example, it, this just can be just an example because this topic is so huge. If you add some water to a large tree, it evapotranspirates that and it will cool the, uh, the, the, the surrounding uh, area. Uh, if uh, there is a small amount of water. Of course, the cooling effect is smaller because it's just a pure physics. Uh, so what we can do, I think um, I will show you then the, some definitions of arboriculture. It, it's, it, I don't want to make it more academic, uh, very much academic, but what, what I want to uh, to say and to offer you as an option uh, we should think about reshaping the focus of arboriculture from less reactive and less uh, technical discipline to more uh, to climate emergency or a climate uh, climate uh, change uh, mitigation and adaptation science or practice. And what is important. Uh, I gave you on the web page. I shared with you, and uh, it's going to be at the end as well. Uh, I put there some links to podcasts of a uh, climate emergency Europe podcast. Um, that, that this is wonderful to to listen to and to have a let's, uh, let's say a wider look what we are standing uh, uh, for because you know. Uh, I mentioned my fans and my uh, food production by purpose because I can survive much more longer than these guys, uh, citizens of the cities. You know, uh, it seems to be that if we don't take a personal action, action on the local level or national level or even global level like me, uh, that the, 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 the migration uh, waves uh, which are expected are really enormous and we uh, didn't uh, um, um, have anything like that in, in a human uh, history. So I would like to ask you to, to try to consider and to start in uh, refocusing or broadening the focus of arboriculture and, and uh, urban forestry a bit further. Okay, well, uh, this is just what I said, you know. Uh, I asked John and he sent me uh, the official arboriculture uh, definition, which is science and practice. Uh, and I can see that in cultivation. Well, okay. Um, science and practice of cultivation, establishment, and management of humanity trees for the benefit of society. Uh, I would stress the benefit of society is very weak uh, definition and it should be improved. And uh, it means arboriculture is a tree care. You are definitely right. You are climbing, uh, climbing trees, you, are pruning, you, you prune them and all these stuff. Uh, but 
it's not enough, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, I would like to start the discussion. Um, I've got another definition. It's, it's urban and a very urban form forestry. Uh, this is the most used uh, definition as, as uh, I found out. Uh, it's from 1996 and it's unbelievable how uh, how quickly time is running because it's really outdated, you know, well-being of urban societies is not, uh, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be according to my best knowledge and perception uh, shouldn't be the main objective of urban forestry. By the way, it's not done anyway. Uh, when I talk to uh, different, uh, you know, management levels on on city councils, halls, and all this stuff, uh, their their role is not to protect or to grow trees. Uh, their their role of the middle uh, level. Uh, officers is to sign permits for felling trees. Well, okay, somebody told me that uh, urban tree does not deliver anything to climate, but more to microclimate, which means just this cooling, stormwater management and all these ecosystem services. But I really don't agree. But by the way, it's not someone, I know his name and he is working on uh, Research Institute for Global Change in unnamed country, and I really can't understand. Uh, I really can't ag agree on that. I've got some data uh, for you uh, to prove it. Uh, just from the U.S. doesn't matter. It's it's almost the same everywhere. Uh, urban forests in the U.S. stores about eight million tons of carbon which is 3 billion tons of CO2 uh, in above and below the grass, grass uh, below the ground biomass and sequesters something about 150 million of tons of CO2. I believe it's more. <clears throat> so it's basically 5% of total US emissions. Uh, now imagine, imagine the truth that if it's the situation, if we can improve the growth of biomass of these trees uh, three times and we can cover 15 percent of total emissions of the country wow everyone of you can have or has any time uh, uh, every day has impact on what's going on in urban forest. You know, urban foresters, you are uh, decision makers. Maybe you are just interested in uh, people in, in the in the topic. Uh, but you know, I want to offer you alternative way of doing your job. I guarantee you, you don't lose any money. You can earn more, and we will need you of you uh more people like like you like arboriculture uh uh and tree care professionals if we can transform your job from reactive arboriculture to conservation arboriculture i don't know how to call it this is just a working name uh like uh climate change mitigation arboriculture i don't know uh we can do something for us for our children and uh for their children uh definitely and if it is so i would invite you to become a kind of evangelist of of such an approach uh we can talk later you're, you're you're basically the first people i uh present to uh this concept so well okay let's go now uh I've got a kind of list of sins of today's urban forestry as I saw, see it as outsider. Please don't beat me, uh, don't kill me, leave me, uh, <laughs> uh, leave me alive. Uh, maybe it doesn't apply to everyone of, uh, of you. It doesn't apply to a particular country or particular city. I don't know. This is what I, how I see it at the moment, and I can open the discussion, you know. Uh, 
more many people talk about importance of tree, but they act in the opposite way. It was I mentioning, for example, these these uh, people from cities, uh, city governments signing the contracts. You know, uh, I could name a bunch of uh, examples. Uh, what's what's very very bad is replacing large trees with small crown cultivars because small crown means no ecosystem services. You know, uh, this is just math uh, and science. Uh, the same thinking that large trees uh, which are removed can be replaced by one or few newly planted trees. This is not true. Uh, or the 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 removed trees are not replaced uh at all this is this is obvious it's it's because of the utility uh mostly because of the utility pipes and all this stuff in the ground uh terrible um we are removing it, it's it's it has to be said very loudly that now we are removing large trees which grew up in periods where there were less stresses and they reached maturity it's not very probable to trees planted today. So uh, if we can take care of these uh, trees better, uh, then uh, we are the winners. Um, being reactive, not proactive. It, what, what I mean with this, uh, I've got a feeling that almost all defects or pests can be prevented 10 years or maybe 15 years before it actually they happen or appear uh, 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 a spot on the tree i mean uh techniques of pruning and all these stuff uh it's uh, uh being reactive is 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 very important for me uh <clears throat> we communicate or, or many people communicates that 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 you know, trees are really important for uh, fighting climate change, uh, but no real numbers are behind this. So uh, I provided you this presentation to use it, uh, print it or forward it or whatever. Uh, and, and if you want to, <clears throat> excuse me, if you agree with my argumentation, please spread the word, uh, word and the presentation as well. Uh, being oriented towards the future, uh, not the present. This, this is very important. You know, there are, there are a lot of discussions about uh, what kind of trees to plant in the cities. Uh, what, what, what should be the construction of uh, planting trip at the pit? Or what, what, what should be watering techniques? Or that we have to have a biodiversity in, in newly planted trees? Yeah, that, that, that's definitely uh, a relevant discussion. But you know, uh, I haven't heard uh, many, many people uh, who want to use or to support the infrastructure, the green infrastructure we already have. Uh, so uh, maybe it's it's a kind of uh, a trigger to to change it a bit. Definitely planting large amounts of trees, it's harming us, not helping us. It can help us in, in, uh, in the future if we can uh, uh, have a proper aftercare. And, uh, well, let's make it quicker. quicker. Sorry, I, I suppose that I've got, I've got some, uh, I, I've got already time to stop. Um, the problem is definitely not adopting a new technologies and new approaches and not supporting the localization of ecosystem services. <clears throat> Sometimes it's 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 really unbelievable uh, what we don't know and what are the consequences. I, I was on the conference of uh, about biodiversity and it was said that stump uh, green, gringing is one of the worst thing which can be done on uh, on a, uh, a species of beetles living in in old wood and definitely you can add some more uh this it depends on you and i'm waiting for for your inputs as well uh, you might say well okay we uh, don't have money for supporting 
uh, existing uh, green infrastructure and to support ecosystem services, uh, which are provided by this. Uh, but you might remember that uh, we started to sort out the municipal waste to paper, to cans or whatever, to plastic, separating uh, uh, the waste. Uh, we stopped uh, using freons in our refrigerators uh, to stop ozone uh, hole uh, appears, appearing appearing on uh, on the earth. <clears throat> uh, basically, we started to use cars because uh, uh, they were developed for our transport, uh, and um, we we can find so many examples how we can change things if uh, the voice is raised and this is exactly the point you know uh i uh, th th this is not a task for one person and you can really go uh, to client who ordered a uh, tree felling uh saying look there is a better way how to do it and it's going to be fine for all of us uh you can really uh ask your mayor uh to uh focus part of the budget uh, for uh, urban forestry, not for planting new trees, but <clears throat> to proper care of, of large trees. With this, that you can provide to this mayor my presentation with my numbers or numbers from, from global scientists who got a Nobel Prize. Uh, to uh, publish it in local newspapers and make uh, the uh, make uh, the campaign for himself, I don't mind. You know, if it if it serves the purpose, then I'm I'm okay with this. Uh, we can do many things. You know, uh, I let me mention my per, my 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 uh, self for the last time, maybe. <clears throat> I'm not saying that because I want to be famous. I want to be forgotten. But um, uh, the personal example is is quite good way how to show uh, people what can be our way from climate crisis. So I talk to global uh, global uh, audience uh, on conferences. Uh, I speak. Uh, on national levels, like to you or to Arboriculture Association, or in in Croatia, in in Poland, and whatever. And in the same time, you know, I I, I always wanted to forget about local activity because you know I said, okay, I can't change anything because I'm not a politician or whatever. But I started this year or, or uh, in December last year. Uh, and I really went to a local politician saying, you know, uh, this is this could be improved, or this uh, was about technique of of planting trees. But uh, then um, there there is uh, a, one of my personal uh, projects uh, protecting local uh, butterflies, you know. So so we uh, it, it it would be great if we can act on multiple levels because. Uh, we cannot wait that politicians in uh, in in uh, Egypt COP27 would solve us uh, because if there is no push from bottom, we can change anything. You know, they, they even don't know uh, uh, how many trees do we need to replace one large tree. You know, so it's a uh, opportunity for you. Well, yeah, it's it's written here, but basically. Every day, you as an arborist or urban foresters, you can have a direct impact and offer uh, alternative for uh, for doing this job. And to transform your uh, work from reactive arboriculture to conservation arboriculture. Uh, um, I would like to offer you to become evangelist of such an approach. And of course, it uh, it belongs to Arboriculture Association of the UK and other colleagues around the world uh, as well, for sure. Uh, so 
last mention of my name and yes, uh, my contacts. Uh, you can scan the QR code. I can uh, put the link of the presentation to the chat. Do what you want, uh, and and good luck in your in your mission. If you want to ask something, don't hesitate to contact me. Definitely. Thank you, Martin. Brilliant. Two brilliant was, presentations. Yeah. It was long. I know it was long. Sorry. We've got more than 400 people are still here, and I assume they're doing that because they think it's brilliant. So thank you very much to both of you. We, we've got, I, I, we've had so many, we've had more engagement. Uh, sorry, I'm kind of choking here. I think I must have drunk something the wrong way. <clears throat> Soft drinks, I'm trying to give them up. Um, right, we've had loads of questions, lots of exciting stuff in the chat. The first thing I'm gonna do is share my screen so that you can see the uh, code. Uh, so that if you're an ISA member and you need some CEUs, you can use that code and do whatever it is you do with it and show that you were here and that you, you learned and you listened. So that's really good. Um, we'll pop that in the chat in just a minute, but it's right there. Okay. I've picked out some questions because we've had so many, we're not going to be able to get through them all. We'll just... We say we finish about half seven. We might go sit a 10, 15 minutes over, but come on, what else have you got? What would you rather be doing than this? Absolutely nothing. Um, Yarek, we'll do a quick question for you. <clears throat> Excuse me, I really don't know what's happening. <clears throat> um, okay, Yarek, a question from Paul. Uh, it's quite a feat to have had a European-wide collaboration in an industry that is underfunded everywhere. Do you think there is scope for a wide range of data collection for future arboricultural research, maybe using mobile phone apps or sharing summaries and articles of uh, interesting jobs or contracts. How can we do more? And how can we look at um, sort of uh, collecting some data for future projects? Mm -hmm. You know, the collection of data, this is really something we work quite a lot on uh, for a long time already. Uh, try to check the web page, which is called checktrees.com. I'll put the link into the, the, the chat as well. But uh, I must say that many people, even within the working group, uh, expressed the, let's say, fear of sharing data even within the uh, tree industry because the paranoia about tree being located somewhere and being of certain quality or tree associates being uh, that or that is pretty high. So there are challenges there. So, uh, you know, within the next project, which I mentioned, uh, uh, the three consultation standards, which we are now developing, there is an, uh, an area uh, how to uh, or where we want to uh, create some, let's say, generic uh, web page for testing people, sharing uh, articles, sharing resources. So, uh, you know, uh, keep in touch with us, with the project, with EAC, European Agricultural Council as well. And uh, we'll definitely try to set something up, but um, I'm totally with you. Uh, lack of money, lack of time, everything is against that. But, you know, trees need, need us and we just need to do something for them. Thank you very much, Rachel. And it is really inspirational to see, um, to see that project happening at all. I think it's great. Uh, someone's pointed out that the code I flashed up uh, is last week's code. Congrats for realizing it's last week's code. You're obviously paying a lot of attention, but I've just changed the code and put it in the chat. So I'm very sorry. We don't want anyone double dipping into uh, the CEO pot. Uh, right, <clears throat> Martin, so I'm still choking to death. Question from Ian, who's asking about the carbon sequestration figures that you've given. Uh, does that consider the tree above the ground or does it also consider the biomass that's in the roots below the ground? Uh, both. Both. To make it quick. I was going to say, I was, I was just about to have another drink. I was setting myself up for 30 seconds of answer, but don't worry. Both. OK, great. Well, that's obviously... Yeah, I mean, I should imagine there's plenty below the ground as well. So that's definitely important. Thank you, Andrew, for confirming the code. Sorry for everyone there. Uh, OK, we've had so many questions. I've actually got to try and be vaguely organized, um, which normally means it goes worse than normal. But uh, right, Yarek, question from Matthew. Uh, he says it's a fab project. 
Uh, are there any plans for future standards like nursery production, tree inspection, trees in development? What's uh, what's being planned next? Yeah, I, I mentioned already. Not 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 really nursery. Uh, this is area where we don't have really intentions to go into. But tree assessment, uh, tree value calculation, and uh, protection of trees on development sites. This is the scope for the project ECOST, which is now running and will be finished in three years. So in three years, you're going to come back and give us another presentation. <clears throat> thank you for invitation. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Um, OK, Martin. Uh, hang on a minute. I have written it down, I promise. OK, Martin, Chris has asked, I think this might be a, a big question. It won't just be a one word answer this time. How many years does it take a planted tree to become carbon negative? This is what was mentioned in this uh, uh, in this presentation, and it's uh, about 30 years. 30 years. Yes. <clears throat> You know, this this is exactly uh, there, there. There is a link in the presentation. Shall shall I share it again? Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, this is absolutely uh, precise assessment of carbon footprint of newly planted tree. No, sorry. Yes, this, 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 this one, this one, you know. And it's it, it was depending on uh, on how um, maintenance cycles were were um, were designed. So if the maintenance was uh, in higher frequency, the carbon neutrality became after thirty three years. If uh, the trees were uh, less uh, maintained, which means less carbon footprint, I was uh, was twenty six years. But as I mentioned, these these uh, trees were uh, transported eighty kilometers away from the nursery, so very very close. Uh, I was speaking about these thousands of kilometers uh, uh, transport in in Europe, uh, which is happening uh, quite often. Was it an answer? That was a perfect answer. Okay. And it was even more than one word, which is ideal. <laughs> Great stuff. Thank you. Okay. The next question I think was kind of aimed at Martin, but I'm going to ask Yarek first and then we'll go to Martin. Uh, and it is from Ian. Ian again. Ian gets two questions. Um, Ian's asked, are there any European governments demonstrating best practice in post-planting maintenance as a part of their tree planting initiative? I'm asking you, Yara, because obviously you've worked with a large number of people from around different countries in Europe. Was anyone saying our country's got it right? We're doing it the right way. I think many countries say that. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, I, I must say that I was very impressed by the, the experience, which is in Holland uh, for the post-planting tree care, where the systems they developed for this part of uh, tree maintenance it's really impressive and uh, you know many uh, parts of the european standards uh, within this uh, uh, this area was taken from them uh, well you know i think this is the challenge because you know as i mentioned before for politicians to sell to the people okay we've planted million trees it's very cheap really but to say okay we took care for some trees no one really understands that from for the public so this is responsibility for uh, for our industry and this is something we are the advocates for so yeah I, I totally agree that this is something we all need to work on permanently thank you martin have you got any experience of particular governments you think are getting it right no and i'm obeying the political questions which is not correct and i have to act personally to this uh toward this uh, to become better um but what i want to maybe what i wanted to 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 uh continue what yarek said you know holland and inventions I, i'm inventor you know 
And in, uh, inventions can be very dangerous as well when they uh, are not used well. And I remember, for example, uh, this this uh, uh, case study from uh, Holland when they used uh, soil moisture, uh, moist uh, soil moisture sensors, you know, uh, and they they watered trees all the time. Uh, so the root system can't develop uh, very well. It can, it can be developed very well. So we have to be very careful in terms of, of using any technology to use it uh, with with kind of scientific knowledge. You know, it's the same like like these tree planting. You know, because uh, basically in this web page I prepared, there is uh, there are the podcast links to podcasts of how all these planting initiatives started what was behind that was not by purpose of these scientists but it just happened you know so it's great to to hear uh of that but i don't have any political examples sorry for that thank you and don't say the dutch are the best at it because I've, I've got a few dutch friends who will be who will be not stopping talking about that because uh, they, they like to be told they're the best i hear um, okay, right, what have we got? Oh, well, let's do it. We've got another question. Another question about carbon sequestration for you, Martin, um, which is another one from Paul. I think it might be Paul's second question. Uh, do the sequestration equations take into consideration cavities or heartwood decay, or is it is it based simply on the living tissues rather than just the storage as well? These calculations are based on uh, on uh, diameter uh, of uh, of dBh and height, and uh, the equation equals to uh, red oak. Uh, this is what I showed the example, uh, because uh, any uh, every every tree spe species has a different. Uh, shape or different uh, growth dynamic, dynamics and so on. So uh, decays, uh, cavities are not calculated in this example. So if you if we talk about carbon storage and the tree is from 50% hollow, then of course we don't have uh, these carbon storage as described on the results because it's just half we cannot we cannot uh cover this in the equations sounds reasonable thank you very much um right okay there's some there's some really really good conversations been going on in the chat and there's so many questions we've had i think we've had about 50 questions or more 60 questions so we haven't had a chance to go through all of them as always we're going to send all the questions and we'll send the chat to our presenters and then if anything particular catches their eye, they'll be able to get in touch with you if they so desire. Or um, you can always email me, john at trees.org.uk. I certainly won't be able to answer the questions, but I can forward them on to people who can. Um, right, last question before we go, before we all go and do our fun evening things. Last question. It's an old favourite. What is your favourite tree-related book or book-like thing let's say so uh who wants to go first yeah i have to get ready okay so uh, yeah can you go first yeah you know it's surprising question thank you for it <laughs> no no i'll say uh, i i thought about it quite a long time but i'm really impressed by one book uh i'm at this moment translating into czech language it's book by uh, Dirk Dyesiefken, uh, who was part of the, the group as well, The Coded Principle. I think it's being translated into English as well uh, already. And uh, I must say, I'm dealing with the Coded and these reactions of trees for 30 years, really. Uh, Dirk's book or booklet at that time was one of the first uh, things I read about the uh, immune, immune system of the trees, even before Shigo's books uh, reached me. And I was impressed at that time. And I must say, after the 30 years, I'm still impressed. I really, by reading and translating the book, I learned a lot again even being in the in the industry so long. So I strongly recommend this book in any language available. 
and that's my favorite for now. Brilliant, good choice. Thank you very much. And uh, Martin, I fully agree with Yaroslav. I forgot about this book, but I haven't read it. <laughs> but I, I fully agree. Yeah, uh, it, it was a, a wonderful presentation as well. Okay. Well, I, I, as I mentioned, I don't have a book. I've got uh, on uh, on this uh, download page, I put some links to very important uh, uh, podcasts. I think that this is this is you know that th there is a description of what how how all these planting initiatives began. This is really this because after uh, publishing the uh, uh, Thomas Crowder uh, uh, work in 2016, uh, there, these planting initiatives with trillions of trees uh, came. And this is a video of his review from 2020. And there is um, uh, a podcast from Ted, uh, Ted interview in 2021, very interesting. You know, and then I put this Planet in Crisis podcast, which is great when you are weeding, for example, in in a garden because of uh, too hot weather. Uh, then uh, you you have a lot of time for uh, listening such a podcast. And I can't stop sharing the screen. That's all right. We're pretty much done now. You can share away. Uh, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. And I think, I think that might be the first podcast we've had as a recommendation. We've had stuff that wasn't books before, um, which is great. And we will do again, we're planning possibly in the next Star of Magazine or maybe in the one after that, we'll, we'll do another list uh, of all of our presenters on all of our webinars and their favorite books. <clears throat> so you can go out and uh, you can do some reading or some listening. Why not try both at the same time if you think you're clever enough? Okay, that is it i reckon um it's been absolutely brilliant i hope we are going to see you all next week um when we have guidance on soil assessment for trees with claire hardinson and simon parfi it's going to be another really really good one let's see if we can get more than 500 people for the third week in a row that would be a record breaker so you're all responsible for my happiness by joining us next week um thank you so much to yarek and martin absolutely brilliant such thought-provoking and inspiring presentations uh, and thank you to all of you out there uh, for watching and for sticking with us and uh, for all of your support as always. I hope you, uh, you can join us again soon and have a lovely evening and a lovely week. Take care. Thank bye -bye. you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening.